Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Could I start by joining the Prime Minister in paying tribute to the British winners at Wimbledon Andy Murray, Heather Watson, Jordana Wiley, Alfie Hewitt, and Gordon Reid? And also, I think it would be nice if we congratulated Serena Williams on her fantastic achievement as well. Mr Speaker, it's only right that after six years as Prime Minister we thank the Right Honourable Member for Whitney for his service. I've often disagreed with him, but there are some of his achievements I really want to welcome and pay recognition to today. One is to helping to secure the release of Shakur Amir from Guantanamo Bay and legislating to achieve equal marriage within our society. And I'm sure he would like to acknowledge that it was Labour votes that helped him to get it through on that occasion. <laughs> Uh, but would he also perhaps for a moment express some concern at the way that homelessness has risen for the past six years and looks like it's going to continue to rise in this country? Well, first of all, let me thank him for his kind remarks. I'll join him in paying tribute to Serena Williams, who's now, I think, knocked uh, Steffi Graf's uh, gr amazing record of 22 Grand Slams. Uh, 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 she's overtaken that. Can I, thank him? Can I thank him for what he said about Shaker Armour? That was a case that this government raised again and again with the US government, and we're pleased that it's been resolved. I'd also thank him for what he said about equal marriage. There are 30,000 gay people in our country who, in the last um, six years, have been able to get married and I think that is real progress. I'll never forget the day actually in number 10 when one of the people who works very close to the front door said to me, uh, I'm not that interested in politics, uh, Mr Cameron, but because of something your lot have done, I'm able to marry the person I've loved all my life this weekend. And that was, uh, there are many amazing moments in this job, but that actually was one of my favourites. Um, as for homelessness, it, it is still 10% below the peak that we saw under Labour, but the key is building more homes. We have built 700,000 homes since I was, but, so I became Prime Minister, but now we need to quicken the pace on that. But the key to building more homes is, yes, programme like help to buy, yes the reforms to the planning system, but the absolute key is a strong economy. Jeremy Corbyn. Mr Speaker, I've been listening carefully to what the Home Secretary has been saying over the last few days, and she said it's harder than ever for young people to buy their first house. So does the Prime Minister think this is because of record low house building or his government's apparent belief that £450,000 is an affordable starter home? Well, well, first of all, let me say at the dispatch box how warmly I congratulate the Home Secretary yeah. on becoming leader of the Conservative Party. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to women Prime Ministers, I'm very pleased to be able to say pretty soon it's going to be 2-0. Yeah. <laughs> and not a pink bus in sight, Mr Speaker. Yeah. Now, on the issue of... On the issue of, 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 of housing and um, homelessness, as I said, 700,000 homes have been delivered. He asks about this issue of, of affordability, which is absolutely key. When I became Prime Minister, because of what had happened to the mortgage market, uh, a first-time buyer often needed to have as much as £30,000 to put a deposit down. Because of the combination of help to buy and shared ownership, some people are actually able to get on the housing ladder now with a deposit of as little as £2,000. And with the low mortgage rates as well and the new houses we're building we're making good progress. Jeremy Corbyn. Mr Speaker the malaise seems a little deeper still the Home Secretary said so that it really talking of the economy she said so that it really does work for everyone because it's apparent to anyone in touch with the real world that people do not feel our economy works that way isn't she right that too many people in too many places in Britain feel their economy has been destroyed in towns they're in because the industries have gone. There are levels of high unemployment or underemployment and a deep sense of malaise. Don't we all need to address that question? Well, well if we're going to talk about the economic record, let's get the facts straight. We've cut the deficit by two thirds. There are two and a half million more people in work in our country. There's almost a million more businesses. 2.9 million apprentices, apprenticeships have been, uh, have been trained under this government. And when it comes to poverty, 300,000 fewer people in relative poverty, 100,000 fewer children in relative poverty. And to be accused of 
sloth in delivery by the right honourable gentleman. Let's just take the last week we've both have been having these leadership elections. We got on with it. We've had resignation, nomination, competition and coronation. They haven't even decided what the rules are yet. <laughs> got into power, it'd take about a year to work out who would sit where. <laughs> Jeremy Corby, democracy is an exciting and splendid thing and I'm enjoying every moment of it. <laughs> the Home Secretary, the Home Secretary, Mr Speaker, uh, was talking of the economy, the Home Secretary again, she said, many people find themselves exploited by unscrupulous bosses. I can't imagine who she's referring to. But um, in, uh, in his, uh, in his um, handover discussion, Mr Speaker, in his handover discussions with the Home Secretary, could he enlighten us as to whether or not there is any proposal to take on Agency Britain by banning zero-hours contracts, clamping down on umbrella companies, repealing the Trade Union Act, or preferably all three? Well, he's right that uh, democracy is a splendid thing. I have to, uh, have to uh, agree with him about that. Let me answer very directly on um, exploitation in the workplace. It's this government that for the first time has introduced a national living wage. That is a huge change. It's this government that has massively increased the power of the Gang Masters Licensing Authority. There are record fines for businesses uh, that don't pay the minimum wage and much more policing and prosecutions taking place. All of those things have changed under this government. And as for um, zero hours contracts, they account for less than one in 40 people in work. 60% of people on zero hours contracts do not want to work more hours. And it was this government that did something the Labour Party never did, which was to ban exclusive zero hours contract. 13 years of labour, but it took a coalition Conservative government to do it. Uh, uh, let me say something to him about the democratic process of leadership elections, because I did say uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago that I thought it was, I have to say, I'm beginning to admire his tenacity. Uh, he is reminding me of the Black Knight in Monty Python's Holy Grail. <laughs> He's been kicked so many times, but he says, keep going, it's only a flesh wound. I admire that. <laughs> Mr Speaker, um, I would like the Prime Minister to address another issue that the House voted on last week. And I've got a question, I've got a question from Nina, who said... No, hang on. Yeah. It's a question from somebody who deserves an answer. And she says, I would like to know if there is any possibility that a European Union citizen who has lived in Britain for 30 years can have their right of permanent residence revoked or deported depending on the Brexit negotiations. There has been no clear answer to this question. It is one that worries a very large number of people and it would be good if in his last question time the Prime Minister could at least offer some assurance to those people. Let me reassure Nina, there's absolutely no chance of that uh, happening to someone in those circumstances. We are working hard to do what we want, which is to give a guarantee to EU citizens uh, that they will have their rights respected, all those who, who have come to this country. Uh, I, the only circumstance I could ever envisage a future government trying to undo that uh, guarantee would be if British citizens in other European countries didn't have their rights respected. So I think it is important to have reciprocity. But the, the, the new Prime Minister will be working to give that guarantee as fast as we can. I'm glad he mentions emails because actually I've got an email as well. Um, now, I got this, I'm not making this up, I promise. I got this on the 16th of September 2015 from someone called Judith and she said this, please, please keep dignity and not triumphalism during the first PMQs today with Jeremy Corbyn. And she gave this reason. She said, because Tom Watson, who may oust Jeremy Corbyn, is a very different kettle of fish. He's experienced, organised and far more dangerous in the long term. She goes on, so sensible, sober, polite answers to Mr Corbyn, let him create his own party disunity. <laughs> After this is over, I've got to find Judith and find out what on earth happens next. <laughs>
the pleasure of asking the Prime Minister 179 questions. And, uh, thank you. Well, there are plenty more to come to his successor. Don't worry about that. Uh, but before I, before I ask him the last question, could I just put it on record and wish him well as he leaves this office and also to wish his family well, Samantha and their children, because I think we should all recognise that whilst many of us really do our in enjoy our jobs and our political life, it's the loved ones nearest to us and our families that actually make enormous sacrifices that we may be able to do this. So I'd also like him to pass on my thanks to his mum for her advice about ties and suits and songs. <laughs> She's extremely, it's extremely kind of her, and I'd be grateful if he'd pass that on to her personally. And I'm reflecting on the lesson that she offered. But uh, I've got one rumour that I want him to um, deal with. There's a rumour going round that um, his departure, his departure has been carefully choreographed so he can slip seamlessly into the vacancy created this morning on Strictly by Len Goodman's departure. Is that his next career? Uh, uh, I, I don't really have a passe double, so no, I can uh, promise that is not the case. Let, let me um, say to him, first of all, thank you for the kind remarks and the good wishes to uh, my amazing wife, Samantha, and my lovely children, who are all watching from the gallery today. Um, He's absolutely right. The pressure is often bears hardest on those we love around us in these jobs. And let me send my best wishes to his family as well. I've done a bit of research, Mr. Speaker. I have addressed 5,500 questions from this dispatch box. I'll leave it for others to work out how many I've answered. Um, <laughs> I, because of uh, your belief in letting everyone have their say, I think I've done a record of 92 hours of statements from this um, dispatch box, uh, as well as some very enjoyable liaison committee appearances and other things. Um, I will certainly send my, his good wishes back to my mother. She's, he seems to have taken her advice and is looking absolutely splendid today. But it gives me... It gives me the opportunity to put a rumour uh, to, to rest as well, even more serious than the Strictly Come Dancing one. And he'll appreciate this because El Gato, his cat, is particularly famous. And the rumour that somehow I don't love Larry. I do. And I have <laughs> photographic evidence to prove it. Um, sadly, I can't take Larry with me. He belongs to the house and the staff love him very much, as do I. Yeah.